I'm uh, Saori Shibata from uh, Leiden University in the Netherlands. Uh, we changed the scene to Japan a little bit. I think not many people are not that, uh, I don't think that people are that aware of what's going on in Japan probably. And particularly when it comes to uh, labor movement, uh, even more so, I don't think many people are quite kind of aware of what's going on, I think. Because mainly, uh, people think that Japanese people don't really protest, they're quite loyal to their managers and then um, nothing that significant change happens. So I kind of wants to, I want to challenge that uh, mainstream view, which is basically um, union movement or labor movement is nothing that significant in Japan. So I kind of want to challenge this view. Uh, so this is my book project uh, titled mm -hmm. Japan's Contested Political Economy, Stagnation, Disorganization and Social Conflict. Uh, I can never remember this title. I <laughs> um, um, but I think also partly I kept changing. This is a long lasting project. I'm hoping that I can publish some point soon, but um, I'm still in the negotiation with uh, publishers. Um, so what I'm going to try to do today is that to show that how kind of some labor movement, some kind of labor movement existing and then I think it's kind of interesting movement we can pick up in the case of Japan. So this is the Prime Minister Abe who is probably, you might think that Theresa May might be the most controversial Prime Minister at the moment but I think he's an equally controversial person I think in um, um, I think to me that uh, he's quite one of the worst kind of prime minister. Um, so I'll, I'll try to explain that um, what's going on uh, in Japan. So what I've done in my study is that I'm trying to kind of uh, find out what's um, going on, particularly in there since the 1980s onwards. In Japan, the, uh, some of you might know the early 1990s, we had the kind of uh, the bursting of the bubble economy. And some people might have heard the term the lost decade, lost two decades, or maybe even now we reach the lost three decades. So what we can see from here, this basically collected um, and then coded the newspaper articles and then see that what's the kind of protest movement. Because if we just look at the unionization rate and also the number of strikes or just a simple legal kind of labor disputes, we can't really see much what's going on in Japan. So I used the kind of the newspaper articles and how that publicly the pro protest movement, labor movement have been percepted, um, so perceived. Um, so in the 90, so what we can see is that this kind of peak around the 1990s and also the post uh, uh, 2008 crisis period. So after the bursting of the bubble economy, Japan experienced neoliberalization. And then according to that, uh, um, in along with the accord and what, what's called in, um, together with that kind of neoliberalization process, I think we saw um, a bit more kind of rise of protest movement. And also after the global financial crisis, particularly led by the non-regular workers. So if we see this around the 1995 to 8, 1998, we saw mainly this kind of orange and re uh, blue. Um, those are the kind of two major national unions federations. So the protests uh, were increasingly led by those kind of two, uh, uh, two kind of national centers. So the more traditional actors were the kind of key main actors in the 1990s. However, after the kind of global financial crisis, you can see the increase of the, the pale blue and also green. So those are more um, increasingly read by the non-regular workers and also NPOs and citizens groups. And then it's slightly declined. So I think what we can say is that after the crisis, I think in the post aftermath of the crisis, we see some kind of a peak of the um, well, increase of the protest movement. And then particularly the 1990s that led by the traditional actors, this kind of a May Day event in Japan, still the first of May, or around that time, we see this kind of uh, across the, across Japan. It's not just the Tokyo. This is not even Tokyo. This is like a rural area of Tokyo. But there are kind of quite a big, large number of people gather for to kind of protest um, against the labor conditions or like um, um, well, during that time certain social problems. So this might kind of a more clearly clearly shows the um, that increase of that non-traditional actors, non-regular workers. NPO citizens. So post 2008, 
to up to 2070, we see that increased proportion of non-regular workers and NPOs, and decrease of that to kind of you know main union-led um, actors. <coughs> During this kind of post-2008 period, we saw quite a lot of manufacturing industries that we saw uh, non-regular workers who were dismissed after the crisis. We saw a lot of kind of um, legal pro um, disputes and also well, like a kind of street protest in front of the company. They did the leafleting and also kind of a protest in, in front of the headquarters of those kind of major corporations. Canon announced the 1,000 uh, non-regular workers dismissals. Uh, Nissan Diesel did the similar things, and Isuzu also did about one, nearly 1,000 people announcement. You know, um, uh, they announced that to reduce the number of workers significantly. So clearly, that that kind of you know this kind of uh, exploitative uh, employment relations led to this larger kind of proportion of the non-regular workers who were directly affected by. Um, the post-crisis um, yeah, exploitative employment relations, I think. Um, this also, I uh, kind of aggregated some of the emergent actors, so emergent categories of actors, which include that NPO, citizen group, youth, um, unemployed, homeless people, non-regular workers. So that we see that kind of reversal trend around the 2008 onwards. Um, I mean, these are the kind of um, May Day, they called it May Day for freedom and um, well, for to, to live as well. We didn't see these kind of uh, protests or um, demonstration in the probably 1990s, like people dress up whatever they want to, particularly youth people, they are like a punk rockers, which are quite unusual to see that, you know, the, the youth, you know, we didn't see that. What we saw is always like, this kind of, you know, often tended to be male-dominated kind of protests, but now we started seeing a bit more kind of different types of protests, I think. And also, um, <clears throat> so according with this kind of a new types of emerging categories of actors, it, um, you know, started doing conducting more protests, um, so their way of protesting are different from the um, major protests. So what we see here is that, um, these kind of a 1990s, we saw a quite large proportion of the protest events conducted as a form of institutional, like I call it institutionalized May Day protest events. So it comes around the May of the every year. So it's only kind of following that every year pattern type of kind of protest. However, 2008 um, after uh, for onwards, we started seeing a bit more different non-institutionalized protest events. So they were conducted outside of that usual types of kind of uh, uh, um, protests and also we saw quite a large uh, proportion of industrial legal disputes this precisely reflects the um, the increased number of dismissals among the uh, non-regular workers in japan so we see this kind of more varieties of acts uh, probably started seeing after that 2008 global financial crisis i think <coughs> And this more clearly shows probably that non, um, this kind of proportion increased that after the 2008. Yeah, so same, we saw the same thing. And also together, combined with this new uh, emergence of new types of uh, workers and also new types of kind of um, non-institutionalized types of uh, protest, uh, those new actors clearly tended to show more uh, confrontational types of work. So like compared to the traditional workers, uh, emergent types of actors, they engaged in a little bit more confrontational types of work. So by conducting that outside of that um, May Day protest, you know, they conducted more proactive, proactive type of um, protest. So sometimes um, this is an interesting case that goodwill um, which is called a, a temp agency in Japan. And they were illegally deducting wages from the, the non-regular workers, you know, their employees. And then this is the Mr. Sekine I interviewed as well. And the temp agency workers union he organized. And then he had a meeting with a bunch of the non-regular workers and then he was asking them that what, what is the recent problems? And they said, yeah, we, 
the workers kind of mentioned that I, I'm not really sure about this, but they seem to be deducting some kind of money from our wages, but we don't know what this is. They call it data management fee, but nobody knew what the hell that is. And then they, they kind of, they trying to figure out what's going on. And then that was kind of illegal deduction from the wages. So anyway, um, there's a couple of unions that ten, ten, no, couple of temp agencies, they were doing exactly the same thing, this kind of a deduction of data management fee, data management fee, which is, uh, you know, uh, so weird kind of term. But uh, um, so there's a couple of um, temp agencies were doing this kind of illegal deduction. So he kind of spotted this kind of, uh, you know, illegal act, acts um, amongst those temp uh, agencies. So they kind of asked that couple of people, started with a couple of people, and then gradually increased a number of people to discuss, engage in the kind of collective negotiation with the company. And then the Goodwill, um, the company called the Goodwill, uh, the, ma uh, the head of the Goodwill agreed to, okay, so we've been deducting those money, so I'll, we'll, we'll re uh, pay you back, pay workers back the money that we deducted. So he kind of said that, okay, so are you sure you're gonna pay us back then? <laughs> and then afterwards, that was only 10 people first, but then afterwards it became like 150, 100 people, and then 150 people. And then they're, because they said that, you know, we're gonna pay you back, and then they're trying to um, change, it. he tried to change his, what he said, and then I meant just only to 10 people, but clearly that was illegal action that was revealed in public. Government authority intervened, the local government authority intervened, and then this company just just ban bankrupted or collapsed as well in the, at the very end. So it was like something that he was very proud of, obviously. So there's a kind of more interesting creative types of work I think we started seeing post 2009, uh, eight. So I don't go into detail, but so, so we kind of say that I said that um, the ima you know, we see probably the Japanese capitalism might be characterized by this kind of increase of the new actors, increase of more kind of confrontational types of acts. If we look into a little bit more closely what's actually going on rather than just looking at the unionization rates. Um, but uh, so what question remains? So, so okay, so there's a, some kind of rise of protest. Okay, so what happened? <coughs> was it effective? Okay, so some goodwill case it was like it led to the collapse of the company. It's an interesting kind of you know result. Um, so there are some other kind of results as well. Some of them they could postpone the uh, tax sales tax um, increase in Japan, which has been always controversial. Sometimes they kind of manage to um, gain more social welfare benefits for the uh, the poor people, for the impoverished people as well. Sometimes they kind of, numerous times, they postpone the um, conduct, um, the re uh, amendment of the some temp workers law. Sometimes agricultural reform, the contested agricultural reform can manage to, the farmers manage to gain some kind of a bit better protection for themselves. So there's a, some other kind of gains as well, I think. So I think the policy making is not just kind of that, you know, the Prime Minister Abe such as kind of very authoritative type of domi domineering kind of Prime Minister, they're trying to impose some policies, but not necessarily that can be kind of implemented without any obstruction or any, any kind of disruption. There might be some small scale, but there seems some of the policies were increasingly um, affected by some of the protest movement. And also policy makers, they had to bring, uh, give, uh, provide a lot of kind of concessions as well. So there are certain kind of gains I think we saw from as a result of the, um, the rise of protests, I think. And also, um, however, it's not that straightforward as we know that it's not like Japan, Japan's system completely changed to a worker-friendly environment or anything. Uh, as, we, as we know that still ongoing kind of uh, problems, unions themselves also divided in terms of how to unionize workers there's a d divide and some unions say they don't speak to each other, kind of, you know, very long-term divisions and divide exist in unions as well. So there's um, um, kind of, a, even though there are some good results started coming, but there are kind of divisions exist in the unions as well. So what I'm trying to say in this, my current book is that Japanese model of capitalism probably 
used to be amongst the academic, they often kind of cat categorize Japan as more consensus based, more organized, and more coordinated types of um, economy. But that started taking neoliberal characteristics. And then as a result of that, there's a more kind of increasing level of uh, protest and contestation we saw, as I show in the graph. And the policymakers, they're trying to provide concession or they're trying to push forward, you know, push neoliberalization policies forward. But they also kind of failed in, in a sense that, and then they can't replace with any kind of new alternative model. Um, so there's this kind of, I call this Japan's current model, disorganized model of capitalism, which is characterized by a kind of vicious cycle of further flexibilization, rising social antagonism and tension, and then as a result, still then we've kind of seen the lack of consensus. So this is the kind of broad argument of my um, the current book project I've been working on. Um, so thank you. I think I did a bit longer than I